We can get straight into it, guys. Like I said, like I always tell you guys, have water, have maybe a little bit of a snack, um, your notepad and your pen, and we'll go ahead and get straight into it. All right, what is a niche? To succeed in consulting, you have to sell yourself. It is important to pick a niche that can bring attention to yourself and then develop your personal public relations efforts to let the world know who you are. A niche is a habitat supplying the factors necessary for the existence of your business. A specialized market where your service will be able to successfully perform its role. Why is a niche important? The single biggest determining factor that will impact how well you can market your product is the niche that you choose. When you choose the right niche, you should be able to find a small and targeted audience of people specifically interested in what you're offering. Choose the wrong niche, though, and you'll struggle to stand out among the crowd or to find enough people to buy your product. And so I'm going to give you guys some examples of some niches. Just for instance, some things that we do in Shopify, for example. And it's just for example, as far as the junior level, as far as niches, in Shopify, we have the dog niche where we're selling like dog collars. Um, we have the nurse niche where we're selling like nurse t shirts, other nurse uh, sweatpants, uh, hoodies. Um, you have the just the occupational niche in general where you could do like teachers, um, uh, government officials, um, people who are personal trainers, all those types of things. Those are all niches by themselves. The health and the health and fitness niche. Is a niche all by itself, and those just are just some things, some some examples. So let's go ahead. Macro versus micro. The niches that everyone knows are guaranteed to make someone money, but it is also the most competed when you choose a broad niche. It is important to know how to pull away from the competition. So it is important to first know when choosing your niche the two categories of niches. You have to choose from the macro niche and also the micro niche. The micro niche. Once you begin exploring various niches in your journey into internet marketing, you may run across the term micro niche. We've already defined niche marketing as marketing to a specific audience. It's a topic that has a narrow and targeted audience. Instead of marketing to the entire pet population, for example, you're marketing to all owners of S Siamese cats. Micro niches are topics that are even more targeted. They're often based on very specific search terms, for example, how to bathe a Siamese cat or Siamese cat habits. Micro niches can be used to create a single website or they can be used to create website pages that all support a niche. For example, if you have a Siamese cat niche, you might then focus your content on five micro niches. Again, like researching your niche, you'll want to use search engines or specific micro niche keyword finding tools to help identify profitable micro niches. Instead of marketing to 100,000 people, you might be marketing to 5,000. However, the idea is that you can become the primary resource for those 5,000, then your profits have the potential to be huge. Often, if your niche is initially narrow enough, then the micro niche serves as your five to eight categories on the site for good SEO. So, what is a macro niche and how it differs from the micro? Macro niche. Like we spoke earlier, a micro niche is a niche that most commonly is most known. These niches are severely saturated and although allow people to make big money, they also allow people to lose money due, the, due to the competition it brings. This is how you find your niche. When finding your niche, there are four main features that you will need to focus in order to find 
your true niche where you will be the most prosperous in. Number one, identify the talents and skills you're good at. Be honest with yourself on this. Because the answers to this will cascade down to the next set of questions. Recognize the difference between those pursuers you are good at and those you wish you were only good at. Put all the judgment aside in this step so you only focus on talents, not whether those talents will take you anywhere. So what is the easiest ways to find your skills? The dictionary says talent is a natural endowment of a person. So we're all born with our talents. It's up to us to grow and develop them. But the seeds are in us at birth. Talent is an ability or natural capacity or potential that we have. Which may range from our creativity, our intellect, or social skills to our athletic abilities. We all have talents. But we're not always so good at identifying what they are. In fact, our best talents can be right in front of us. And we miss them. We're so busy searching for a talent that we think is hot or lucrative or sexy or fun. Or more like how we imagine our life being. That we overlook the actual tremendous potential we have sitting there waiting to be discovered. If you can determine what your talents are, you can put a tap into an amazing resource that can help you in every aspect of your life, including your business. Whether you're searching for the perfect type of business to open or you want to find ways to grow the one you have, you may find the answer in your personal talents. Listen to others. You may be clueless about your talent, but your friends aren't. So ask them. People around you usually know what your talents are, even when you don't. Because they need something done well. You're the one they're always asking or sending their friends to. Have you ever wondered why everyone wants you to help them negotiate that new car deal? Or help them with repairing their credit? Or fixing their car? If you think about it, people have likely been telling you that you are good at something for a long time. You just weren't listening. Now is the time to listen. Ask everyone you know who is willing to give you an honest assessment about what they think your talents are. Ask them to. For the moment, ignore your bad habits and have them share the one or two things that they think you are hands down most talented at. Ask a lot of people who you know, but always ask them one on one. Compile the results and voila, there is your hidden talent. What comes easily to you? Are there things that you find really easy or obvious to do? while others may struggle or muddle their way through? If you have things that you find super easy, you assume they're easy for everyone. They're almost always not. Just because you believe that they should be just as easy or obvious for others, that's not how it works. In this scenario, they struggle while you stand there feeling like it was a cakewalk. If that's you, chances are that is a talent. What do you enjoy most? Your talents may be demonstrating itself in other ways. For example, are there magazine topics that you just can't get enough of? Are there shows you love? Think about what is that you love to do the most when you have free time. If you are drawn towards it, fascinated by it, and enjoy playing with, exploring, or practicing it, it's a natural talent. What do you love to talk about? Is there a specific subject that you love to talk about? Often to the point that your friends want to shoot you. Consider the subject. Perhaps it may be one of your hidden talents or is connected to one. 
When you know what your talents are, you feel more in tune with your life. The sun shines brighter. Jerks are less jerky. And all is well with the world because you're on track. You have a purpose. Add a vision and add a plan to your talent. And you can also use those talents to excel in the business world. Whether you leverage those talents in your product or service or you use them to network and make quality connections. It's important to know what your talents are. When you capitalize your, on your talents, it no longer feels like work. It just feels like living. And anything that can make businesses and life more enjoyable is bound to be a good thing. Okay, number two. Out of the above talents and skills, what do you enjoy doing most? If your heart and brain aren't in the same place, then they're in conflict with each other, which means you're in disquilibrium. When this happens, I know I said that wrong, disequilibrium. I'm sorry, my words slipped a little bit. When this happens, it feels as if your heart is telling the brain, this just feels right. But the brain is saying, no, do this. This makes sense. What puts a smile on your face? Is there a particular event, a particular topic that makes your whole face just lighten up? Whatever it is that makes you smile and makes you happy whenever you encounter it, this is a sign of something you are passionate about. Passion. Happiness and passion walk hand in hand. Both require each other. So following what makes you truly happy is a wonderful way to figuring out what you were put on earth for. Think about something that you do or perhaps you used to do that brings total peace to you when you do it. Peace is happiness and happiness is passion. Three of those talents. Number three. Of those talents and skills you enjoy, what do people need? This is where doing a little market research will help narrow down exactly what competencies to focus on. Check out sites that offer demographic information to get a better idea of who, where, and how to explore this talent. Identify the problem. When you don't know what problems your target could be having, is it very difficult to ask the right questions? You aren't in a position to be able to steer the customer to a productive resolution or oriented solution. You can't bring value. Know the problem. To increase the chances of connecting with your customer or prospect, you need to be able to identify with the problems and the impact the problem has on their environment. You need to understand the implications of the problems on their business and their ability to meet the goals. Number four, the above needs. What will people pay big money for? What is scalable? If one person will pay money for something, then chances are so will somebody else. Make sure you know what a good decision looks like before taking the plunge toward action. Be honest with yourself. You may just love the game of football, but with a 140-pound frame, you'll be in for a bit of an uphill and painful battle. Me, I was 140 pounds in uh, high school, but I was a different type of animal. I squatted 500 pounds as a running back. So, you know, I was up for an uphill battle, but I was still the man. When you're able to answer all of these, you'll be able to find your target market that is best suitable to your abilities in order to your consulting business rolling. 